What's up, it's Guru Jojo, and in this video, I'm going to be speaking about the subconscious mind, law of attraction, and basically how to reprogram our subconscious mind. So, before I jump into the subconscious mind stuff, I'm going to speak about the law of attraction and pretty much how that works. So, the law of attraction basically it's this set of 12 principles that basically speak about how we're energetic beings everything's energy we're all vibrations we all have influence in this world everything's connected and because everything's connected every action has a reaction and pretty much it's like it's just it's common sense things that we just tend to forget because we're so focused on like the physical um systems in this life to the point that we forget how it's all like connected together and how much influence we have in this world despite there being so 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 many people and so many things that exist so with that being said um the law of attraction pretty much says that we can manifest things through our thoughts through evoking some sort of emotional state which would then lead to some sort of mental over mentalizing something over and over again and then this brings us closer to actually attracting it in real life but i mean i'm sure people have done it um i've done it before in the past um we do this like subconsciously all the time anyway you think about it if you have a crush on somebody you think about them all the time you think about you being together with them that doesn't necessarily cause that person to be attracted to you so while these methods do work it does work to like have some sort of vision of what you want in your life and then you can attract it that does it does work to a certain extent but there is a missing factor in this and that's what i'm going to be speaking about is why you know we can be reprogramming our mind towards attracting our desires but it may not work and that's basically what I'm going to speak about and the main reason why these things don't work is because we forgot about the subconscious mind it, that's the reason why like the law of attraction works via the subconscious mind the subconscious mind basically deals with what you're being di- indirectly influenced by what you're indirectly thinking about what your the indirect information you're picking up from something so for example like you could be watching this video right now and i could be indirectly influencing you despite just everything i'm saying but maybe i could be indirectly influencing you to tomorrow um maybe you want to you see a shirt at the mall that's similar to this and suddenly you like that shirt but otherwise you may have not even paid attention to that shirt but because maybe what you liked what I was saying in this video and I happen to be wearing this kind of shirt now that indirectly influence you to like this shirt at the mall that looks like my shirt that's what i mean by indirect is these things that we get influenced by that's not exactly related to what the initial purpose was that we were um connecting to that energy in the first place So this is what I'm going to be speaking about in this video is about how to reprogram the mind through understanding the subconscious mind and how it works. So a lot of times the reason why we have trouble reprogramming our subconscious mind is because we tend to try to override things too much in this life. Everything we do, we want to just override it. We want to just reprogram it. We want to just put something over it. We forget to clean out the system. We forgot we forget to clean out our brain. We have to we have to declutter our subconscious mind before we can install new information. Like if you have a computer and you got too much shit on the computer, you cannot try to keep downloading stuff on the computer. Instead what we try to do is we keep trying to add more disk disk space, right? So me I have this little external hard drive. The computer's still running kind of slow because you know what? There's stuff on this computer that I no longer need. So I need to delete the clutter, all the extra files if there's duplicates, if there's a program or application that I'm no longer using, and I need to remove it and boom, I can now create a lot of a lot more space 
There's nothing wrong with getting an external hard drive. There's nothing wrong with adding more memory. There's nothing wrong with maybe even getting a new computer or a new tablet or whatever it is. But you have to understand that you cannot, um, it's not going to improve the system by adding on a new component to add volume. It's not going to improve the system. It's just going to, it's just, you're just adding another system that has more space to it. So you're essentially just like building on top of something, you know what I'm saying? But you're not making it stronger. So like, with that being said, um, another way of understanding this is like, when we just try to be positive about something or be positive about a situation and do maybe like positive affirmations or try to um, use substances or um, and there's and keep in mind there's nothing wrong with positive affirmations I'm not even really against um, people using um, substances as long as it's balanced it's safe and as long as it's not you're not hurting yourself and you're not hurting anyone else um, and so a lot of things I'm like I'm really not too judgmental so um, I guess like I'm kind of more so on a proving side of, of certain things so but my thing is like you can't just expect to do these things and then expect for things to improve in your life expect to manifest blessings because you're essentially just spraying for breeze you know in a, a space that has a lot of garbage and stuff instead of just like taking out the trash like you could just take out the trash and that would take away the smell over time. But it's like people just want to keep like spraying Febreze just because Febreze says it eliminates odors. Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't eliminate odors. Like, you could smell it on top of the garbage. Like, so my thing is, I'm going to teach, I'm going to explain. This video is going to be about basically how to eliminate the, tr like, how to actually eliminate the trash. <laughs> like, and instead of just spraying some Febreze over it. So... The way that you actually reprogram your subconscious mind is there's a couple steps. So the first step is to be aware of the, so basically the first step is gonna actually be to take power in your life, basically to learn to take power in your life, to own your power. So understand you, understand yourself as being a person of power in this life in this existence is that whatever situation that you go through regardless if it was a prosperous situation or if it was a traumatic situation or an experience that wasn't very pleasant okay make sure that you take responsibility for whatever you've gone through the, regardless of the outcome now, I'm not saying to blame yourself for something if it was bad. Nope, don't blame yourself for it either. I'm not saying to blame the other person or blame the environment or blame something other than yourself for the outcome of your situation. Nope, don't do that either. So you don't wanna do the extreme. You don't wanna blame yourself. You also don't wanna blame others. But you want to be aware of how you could have done better what you could have done what you could have done better in the situation so that the outcome could have been um something more in your favor you want to think about um even what others could have done better if you have the time to do that too but the main thing you have to do is like even if even if the situation you understand that damn this <laughs> you know those people in the situation they really mess things up for you like you can understand that stuff you could be aware of it but you need to focus on what you could have done better because when you do that you 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 tell your you subconsciously so you indirectly tell yourself that i'm actually taking power and control in my life Reg regardless if it's physical power it's physical actions or the power of actually being able to let go and um and praying and, and, and hoping for the best but you have to first be able to be a to um convince yourself persuade yourself that you have some sort of power in these situations that you can actually do things to to um 
you can actually do things that will have an effect on the outcomes in your life. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Because when you do this, you install confidence in yourself. You prevent learned helplessness from happening, basically. Because what happens is a lot of people go through situations, right? And let's say that they go through like a bad situation. You know, they're unhappy about the outcome. What they like to do is they like to look at everything but themselves so you have two types of people this is one group of people there's groups of people who like to who go through bad experiences and they like to blame everyone else and blame all the external surroundings as to why they went through that bad experience so they play like a victim role um as it relates to their experiences that's not good when you play the victim you indirectly tell yourself that you're never responsible for your situations when you experience like beneficial um situations um situations where you are prosperous you basically you indirectly now tell yourself that you weren't responsible for that either because if you were not responsible for a bad situation you cannot be responsible for a good situation which means that you place your luck you place your benefits on an external event as well by default you said so that's what i mean by it's subconscious when you sub subconsciously behave in one way always remember that you you um subconsciously influence the other extreme as well so now you cannot take responsibility for you getting that job now you cannot take responsibility for you getting a promotion now you cannot take responsibility for you getting um whatever benefit it is i ran out of examples so like that's what I, that's what i mean by taking power and control in your situations now the other groups of the other type of people that um so the other group of people would be the people that um they go through some sort of situation and um they like to naturally just blame themselves for everything like oh man you know i'm the reason why this happened i'm the reason why this all got messed up i'm the re i messed it up like it's all me that's not, you cannot do that. You're taking too much responsibility for it. You're taking too much blame in which when you go through these bad situations, it's like, God damn, now you, you're you indirectly telling yourself that you, whatever you do is like faded in a negative way. So you see, like when you completely put the blame on yourself, that means that you've allowed people in the past to persuade you that everything you do is wrong and that like you're a bad person so then you indirectly train yourself to be a bad person this is why um, a lot of criminals continue to do crimes it's like th most of the time they've got gotten themselves into some sort of situation um which their surroundings kind of help them to um and and not putting the bling on their just on their surroundings but the surroundings just weren't helpful in making them make better decisions anyway so they already were put in a situation to make negative dis, um decisions and then they didn't have the willpower right the power they didn't know how to take power and control in their lives to know that they can make their own decisions and they didn't need the, um their surroundings to um to try to take control over that. They had control over that, but they didn't know that. So then they got into a situation in which they ended up doing some sort of crime or criminal behavior. And then they got blamed for that situation. They allowed those people to blame them or something like that. And then now they end up taking that blame, taking that power, taking that energy of blaming guilt. And they end up acting upon that subconsciously. And this is what causes people to keep continue to doing bad things over and over again. You see how like important it is to gain control of your subconscious mind? Never allow people to point fingers at you too much. Like, it's nothing wrong with somebody telling you what you could have done wrong, but make sure that they, they admitted what they did wrong too. If they can't admit what they did wrong too, nah, you're not about to tell me what I did wrong. Sorry. How dare you? How dare you tell me what I did wrong when you can't even take the blame? You can't even um take responsibility. I don't want to use blame. Keyword when it's responsibility use use the more positive version of the of the word So when you don't want to take responsibility for your situations, but now you want to try to blame me for my situations tuh. No, you cannot do that. That don't make sense 
So that's the thing is like we have to just learn how to um take power and control in our lives in the areas that we can physically where it's physically possible. You know what I'm saying? And um that's the first step to training the subconscious mind. Always extract the the wisdom and the knowledge from your experiences. What could I have done? What could I have done better? You know, to make this situation go in a different direction that would have been more beneficial to me. And then maybe you can actually look at okay, what they could have done what they could have done better and stuff like that and then you and then you want to just basically that would be the bigger picture of that situation and then when you do this you by default tell your subconscious mind my intentions is to progress myself to do better so you get what i'm saying when you t- when you're able to actually learn from your situations as to what you could have done better you indirectly start to train your subconscious mind. You start to take out the the dirt and the gunk from your subconscious mind and replace it with, I'm trying to progress. Like I see you. So the second thing you wanna do is basically, um, you wanna set some sort of boundaries as it relates to your subconscious mind. So this is when you want to start to realize whatever your your actions on a day-to-day basis whatever you're watching whatever you're listening to whatever your um the people that you're communicating with the people in your environment in your environment and whatnot your workplace and all this stuff start to build subconscious boundaries around these forces meaning that you want to pay attention to the subconscious influences of all of these activities. Let's so, so for example, the news. You know how the news gives you these messages about so it keeps you up to date. We know consciously the news's purpose is to keep us up to date with, you know, what's going on in our surroundings on a day-to-day basis. So we can know the weather for today. We can know um you know, what's going on, like what's the latest current events. But the news is subconsciously also creating stereotypes and stuff for us because we subconsciously pick up on these things, like um, especially back in the day, like how they'll only show crime or crime being made in a certain area or a certain group of people. This creates stereotypes. You know what I'm saying? And then good things that happen, they may only show a specific group of people as it relates to those good things happening. This creates, this subconsciously creates stereotypes for us. So that's what I mean by pay attention to what you're being subconsciously influenced by anything that you're taking in, any information that you're taking in, any activity that you're doing. What are you subconsciously being in? How are you subconsciously being influenced? Pay less attention to the surface message, to what's you, to what's being fed to you on the surface. So, for example, you could be listening to some sort of music or something, or watching TV, a program that's sort of showing like this is to kind of elevate the emotions and feelings, right? But um. What I'm trying to say is look at what it's subconsciously telling you. So to be honest, um, now I'm very connected to the subconscious. So what I'm going to say, it's going to be kind of like, it's going to be like, kind of like who thinks of that? But that's because I'm very connected to the subconscious mind. So keep that in mind. It's going to sound weird, but it's going to make sense. So what I'm trying to say is that when you begin to watch things that, or watch things, listen to things, or even surround yourself around like like people, places, and environments that are overly confident, overly elevated all, all the time, and people that are always like in a very high state of mind. So this is even like the hip hop industry a lot of times. It's like all the music is always like bragging about money, bragging about resources, bragging about like, you know, and, I, and I'm not trying to... Um, 
criticized. I'm just saying this subconsciously influences a community of people that you are not allowed to feel otherwise. So now you have a black community that's very insecure with ever feeling a state of insecurity or ever feeling a state of fear or sadness or depression or being lower down. Now what happens is people have to pretend or lie just to add, just to um almost like live up to that energy that they're being subconsciously influenced by. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Like, it's like, these, this is where I'm saying set boundaries and limits for your energy because it's like, if you go through an experience and you're sad and you're depressed and you're trying to figure out like how to progress yourself you have to be honest with your emotional state you have to be honest with that those feelings of um disappointment and then you have to figure out you know what could i've done better so that you could progress now if you're constantly being subconsciously influenced to think confidently what is the first thing you're going to do the first thing you're gonna do is blame everyone else and then try to pretend like you the shit and that you don't you can't do any wrong. So this is what I mean by start to feed yourself with energies that hold integrity. Start to be honest with your emotions and feelings and start to balance things out. If you're a person who always wanna to listen to music that's like always telling you like, yeah, yeah, I get money, uh, came straight from the hood, got honeys, uh, I'm not talking about honey buns, I talk about honey booty buns, like, you, no, I don't know why I just said that, but it's like, yo, you can't, like, you're, you're subconsciously convincing yourself, your subconscious mind, that this is the best state to be in. So then when you go through actually real life experiences, when you actually experience like bad situations and uh, or whatnot, the only thing you're gonna do is try to force yourself into that mind state that of that what you're listening to, which what is that gonna make you do? You're now going to be more influenced to do drugs or alcohol. You're also going to be more influenced to make shit up and pretend or overspend in order to try to cover up those feelings of insecurity, sadness, depression, whatever it be. Another thing that you're doing is you're also convincing your subconscious mind that you can't actually ever feel that real state of elevation. You can't actually experience a real state of confidence, a real state of happiness so if you convince yourself that you can't experience that you can't experience one extreme you subconsciously influence yourself that you can't experience the other extreme either so then your feelings of the other extreme is always fake it's always bullshit it's always some sort of pretentious energy you never experience the real feelings of elevation of happiness there's a lot of people that go through the, like some really low emotions and then they like pretend to feel happy and stuff and that would be integrity I mean that would lack integrity and this would, would be what you're subconsciously feeding your mind then so therefore you're subconsciously telling your mind that that this is that this is the type of um things you want to attract in your life you're telling yourself that you want to attract, so this is where law of attraction comes in. By you listening to something that lacks integrity, right? You're then gonna attract situations that lack in integrity. And this is by default gonna attract situations where you're gonna be led to disappointment because that's what you're accepting. That's what you're feeding your mind, your body and your spirit. You're feeding your mind, your body and spirit a lie. And then so you start to attract those same energies. And the thing is that it's like, it's weird because it's like, so it's deep. This is what I mean by it's indirect and it's subconscious. Like you're listening to something, you're watching something and on the surface it's making you feel good. But it's like what's backed and supported by that energy is bullshit. So it's like that person doesn't even really... That's where it, I'm saying like when it comes to your subconscious mind, this is where you have to start actually paying attention to the character of things and not just the message. Like that's what's becoming more important now. When, if it comes to you wanting to reprogram your subconscious mind, which is very important, 
when it comes to attracting things that you want in your life and receiving benefits and manifesting beneficial situations and being prosperous in your life. I promise you, like, you have to focus on your subconscious mind. If not, you will, you will still be able to attract good things in your life and stuff, but you will not have like control over these things as well. It's not going to be controlled. It's going to be like random. It's, it's going to be very sporadic basically. Um, which some, some people don't mind that, you know what I'm saying? But this, my videos are really just like to just make people more aware of the things behind the scenes that have been happening as to why we've been attracting certain situations that have caused us to be disappointed. And even too, like how do we attract these good situations so that you can keep attracting them? Um, and why am I teaching this stuff? It's because I simp this is like the stuff that I've experienced and the stuff I've paid attention to as a result. And so I'm just like spreading the knowledge from my own experiences and from what I've learned. So anyways, um, so again, the first thing is going to be to the gain is going to be gaining the power in your life. The second thing is going to be to be aware of what you're being um subconsciously fed and um so creating subconscious boundaries basically. So in other words, again, I'm going to mention so you want to make sure you're creating these subconscious boundaries. So start to look at the character of things so this is when you want to start to pay attention to the meaning and reasoning behind the product the meaning and reasoning behind the um the tv program this is what you want to start to pay attention to when it comes to reprogramming your subconscious mind you have to start to pay attention to the character behind things that these are the so things you want to start to pay more attention to because this is what has subconscious holds over you because your subconscious mind can pick up on like it can pick up on these characters it can pick up on the aura of everything but it's your conscious mind that may not be able to translate it so then it ends up where you get suspicious or something about random other things that don't that so it's like your subconscious mind will pick up on some lack of integrity you could be watching a show okay and you could be kind of picking up on like something ain't real or something ain't right about this show and but you can't, your conscious mind is not fully picking up. What happens is it holds on to that energy and it gets projected in other circumstances. So then you start to think that, um, like, you can start to think um, that your boyfriend is, like, cheating on you or something. So I'm, and I'm very serious. This is what happens to us. Like, when you don't have control over your subconscious mind, the subconscious mind is picking up on a lack of integrity. It holds on to it and it projects out in circumstances that have nothing to do with what your subconscious mind was, was suspicious about. So this is what I mean by um, start to set boundaries um, for your subconscious mind. Meaning that you do this by starting to understand the character behind the things that you are investing in, the things that you are entertaining, and the things that you're feeding your mind, body, and spirit. So the so, next thing that's going to be important to reprogram your subconscious mind is being able to laugh at your mistakes. Because when you're able to laugh at your mistakes, you're basically, you open up the space for support you open up the space for advice you open up the space for recognizing your mistakes and taking responsibility over it you basically you help melt the ice is basically what i'm trying to say when you're able to laugh at your mistakes then you start to be more you makes it makes it, it makes the situation more light hearted for you to actually be able to see as like it's okay, I made that mistake, and you know, ha 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 ha, you know, I just wanna work on doing better. Like, it's a like, lot of times people don't wanna take responsibility for their mistakes because they're just so like, they've been subconsciously programmed 
to um, act perfect and act like they don't make mistakes and, and they've been subconsciously programmed to feel embarrassed about their mistakes when there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, but you, the only thing to be embarrassed about is not wanting to progress, not wanting to do better. I think it's embarrassing when somebody actually doesn't want to look at what they've done wrong and try to improve the stuff. That's embarrassing. It's not embarrassing to, to make a mistake. Mistakes are normal. It happens every day. Now, at the same time, I'm, I'm not saying go run a red light and like crash your whip and then <laughs> oh shit i crossed the whip like nah that's not funny like i'm just saying when you start to realize the big picture of the situation and what happened like you kind of be like Tss. you kind of just be like <laughs> oh that's what this is about it's, instead of getting defensive just like giggle a little bit and like actually want to progress the self so what i'm saying i guess instead of laugh at your mistakes i'm more so just saying be happy to progress in your life. Like, look at the situation in a more positive way. So you can either, A, you can be more positive about learning about your mistakes. And so this helps you to better improve. Or you can be defensive about your mistakes and not take the blame for them. Not, I mean, not take the responsibility for them. And this will cause you to lack in progression this will cause you to stay um stagnant in your life you don't want to do that so that's what i'm saying laugh a little bit like you know just make just be more happy about actually wanting to do better that's it like look at look at mistakes as something that's beneficial for you to to progress like oh shit i made this mistake yo i i cannot wait to to clean that up i cannot wait to do better it's like that's what i mean like kind of just be more confident about self-improvement then next way to reprogram your your subconscious mind is to simply just start to work towards that self-improvement so after you've recognized you know what you could have done better in this situation and you recognize like um so once you recognize what you could have done better in this situation, then this is when you want to almost like imagine what you could have done better and then imagine how the situation would have went differently. And then when you do that, you don't want to have any regrets. You just want to focus on manifesting a new and better experience in your life when you're ready. So then this is now when you can start to install positive affirmations. This is when you want to um, start to um, feed yourself with positive and beneficial um, energies, such as maybe starting to attract and be around um, positive and beneficial people, people that are going to uplift you. Recognize the friends that you're surrounding yourself with. Your friends also subconsciously influence you. Do they side diss you? Do they say things to you that have a message of on a surface positivity, but then do they go and um, contradict that statement later and then this makes you feel bad so this is called gaslighting when somebody kind of like uplifts you but then kind of brings you down right afterward that's like a gaslighting energy now I'm not saying just because someone did that that they're a gaslighter I'm saying when someone constantly acts upon this type of behavior then you don't want you want to set that boundary towards your subconscious mind meaning don't hang out with them no more don't talk to them that much anymore because you don't want to be around people like that because they're feeding your subconscious mind with negativity and most likely they're doing that because someone's doing that to them so um and and you know when you get really good then you can tell them that and then help them but you got to be aware of your boundaries um your subconscious boundaries and then um start to work towards um better self-improvement by simply just like um, being aware of those boundaries, blocking out people, places, and things that are indirectly um, making you feel negative about yourself and not uplifting you. Um, and make sure that you, make sure also too that you uplift others. Because if you don't uplift others, you cannot expect other people to uplift you. Of course, your friends could be doing that to you because you're doing that to them. So also keep that in mind too. Um, and your family members could be doing this to you because you're doing that to them. But if you're a person who you don't really be, you don't, you're not mean to people. You don't try to bring people down or make them feel bad or anything like that. But you're noticing that they indirectly kind of do this to you. 
then you need to you need to kind of break away from that. That's not good. Your your sub your subconscious mind is being too influenced by their negative um spirits, their negative forces. Um and understand too is a lot of times it's not them. It's really these negative spirits that are attached to them from their own experiences and their own lack of responsibilities in their life for their situations that they've gone through. So keep that in mind as well. Um but for the most part you want to just start working towards um, self betterment. Try to try to connect with things that have a good subconscious influence on you, and that make you f and that make you more accepting of your experiences. So for me, I try to connect with things that subconsciously make me more accepting on my emotions and feelings that's the main thing that i do like if anything tries to hinder me from my emotional state um and tries to make me feel bad about how i feel or something like that i don't want to connect with it um so that's pretty much what i do like the thing you could do is get candles you can get incense you can get um crystals um any type of cleansing methods and make sure you do these type of things like once a week or however often you want and and just make sure that you make sure that it's like a cleansing ceremony for you like you cleanse the energies in the air in your space in your orc space and everything and um pretty much that's really it like um when it comes to reprogramming your subconscious mind the main thing is um because everybody really knows about like positive affirmations and stuff. And you can also do like, if you're more of a visual person, make sure you do the positive affirmations through like pictures. So you can get like different sigils and stuff and put them up on a wall and like use those sigils to help like influence you. You can use um, pictures on your phone. Like I think I said in one video, like you, I have like the different chakras that I want to be subconsciously influenced by. You can use um, that. You can wear certain colors to help positive positively influence you. You can um, change the color of like your bath water and stuff like that um, to subconsciously influence you. You can start to look into like how colors subconsciously influence you because they do. That's the reason why McDonald's and Wendy's and stuff is red. Okay, there's reasons why why this is so because these energies have subconscious influence over you. Colors like blue and stuff have to do with like... Um, this is the reason why a lot of social media is blue. You know, it's like Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. It's all like a blue cut because these energies have subconscious influence over. That's the throat chakra, right? That's the communication. What is so social media communication? You see, so that's what I mean. When you start to pay attention to these things, you can reprogram your subconscious mind. So, um, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say for this video, um, today. So, all love and light to you, and thank you for watching.